Hello, everybody. We are here today for the finals of the 2022 Embassy Ruins World Qualifier between Eric and Grey Ghost. Uh, Grey Ghost was the higher seed, so he is the quote unquote favorite for this. And uh, joining me in the booth today is Urban Person. How's it going, everyone? This is Urban Person. We're looking forward to a good game. We have a whole, almost whole Nupton team, which is pretty uncommon, versus a almost whole blue team, which is a little more common with the blue-green cards. But it should be a good game. Yeah, for sure. And uh, we don't have any favorites here, right? You're not, uh, you're not rooting for anyone in particular. <laughs> nope, nope, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, if you don't mind, could you flip the victory conditions over so that way uh, they can start? Yes. All right. And then I also um, I post the links to the deck list. I can pull them up here real quick though. Um, but this is Grey Ghost list. Um, so you see he has eh, Shafafi Kelistabi. But yeah, a lot of uh, blue yellow stuff. Some red cards on Habarat and Ekrit. Uh, Sethru's mid-core, so I'm pretty sure we'll be seeing a lot of Sethru, a lot of damaging stuff. And then Eric's list here, typical Brovar, Shrita, Frail, Shilavi, Blue list with Eric playing Ekrid and Slakala because you know he loves his control. Uh, a lot of three mana cards, Ice Wall, Wind Blast, Sinkhole, Topple, Sudden, sudden Distraction, you know. Eric playing a typical Eric list, and Gregos playing a typical Gregos list. Yes, that pretty much sums it up. I don't think Grey Coast ever plays anything other than Nupton. Oh, could you, sorry, could you do me a favor? Um, can you pull up the stream and uh, copy it into the uh, content channel on the Discord so that way people can actually watch it? <laughs> I, I do not have, I don't think I have access to the post on the content channel. All right, uh, I always forget how to grab the link from here. Where is the actual link to the video? I guess I'll just pull up another window. <laughs> well, while we're waiting, it looks like Eric is going to be first player, and we have Grey Ghost with... I don't know who picked what, but the Terror of the Endless Night is the outsider. And then our objectives are Outflank, The Tamer, and Bloodlust. Yeah, keep talking while I do this. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. For uh, Eric's first pick, he picked Estrita. And then we have Grey Ghost with Sethru and Akuti. From watching Grey Ghost play, Akuti is really, really strong on this map. With her double play of killing two minions right off the bat, moving, worshipping, and then killing two minions on two different lanes. Oh, we have another spectator joining. <laughs> oh. Um, so yeah, I posted the, uh, the video link in the Discord, so now we can actually have people watch us and join us in chat potentially. Okay, awesome. So yeah, I was while I was doing that, I missed the entire draft. Um, I the was draft is, <laughs> yep, the draft just finished. We had Eric pick Brilvar and Shalavi, and then Freyhel. And we had Grey Ghost pick Shafafi and Ekrit as well. Yep, and... They're just getting all this stuff together. So Gregos, as the higher seed, got to got the choice. Um, I'm assuming he just chose the outside. No, he chose to be second, and then Eric chose his outsider. Um, so yeah, we have yep. Eric going first. I heard you mention that, and we have Terra as the outsider. Um, I'm gonna zoom in on the map here now. Now that we don't need to see all the drafting. And then Strida, Brovar, Shulet, Frail. We have Bloodlust, Tamer, Outflank. Um, control point two is on the left as we are looking at it. 
So it's the side that Eric has two heroes, so he does have that advantage towards the outflank. Yeah. Right off the bat, I'm kind of thinking that Eric would probably go for outflank. Yeah, I would agree with that. I'm not sure what Grey Ghost would go for. I'm I'm going to guess probably Bloodlust. That was my thinking. He does have the double mage. I'm assuming Akuti will help for the lane pressure. Eckert will come across. And then, yeah, I could, I'm thinking probably Bloodlust, although potential for Tamer. Yep. Yeah, I think there's potential for both of those. And, and the thing about Nupton is, is that they're very... They're very tricky, so you never know exactly what they're going for right off the bat. Correct. And Eric is going to go for outflank with a secondary objective for Nexus. Yep. <laughs> Alright, so Eric is getting started here. Brovar is activating. He starts with the warship. Um, shape shifts Estrita with the warship. Skirmishes Skirmish. into the dome. And then leads. It's an interesting position on the Brovar. He could have chose to move in one move one spot further up, but I'm guessing he didn't do that because he didn't want to get pushed by Eckert. Yeah. Yeah, that is an interesting turn one. I mean, in two lane, that'd be the go-to for Brovar to go into the dome. Hopefully, hopefully for Eric, he, if Gregos has a fast guard, I think he could probably move into a position that he pushes Brovar out. Yeah, I would agree. That makes sense. Um, I still like this play, though. We see Brovar does have the... Um, that lead was from hand, so... We know Eric yep. loves lead from deck with all of his um, three mana cards, but he did go from hand here, trying to be make sure he gets that dome. Yep. The only thing is, for what I was just saying for Eckert, even if she has a fast card, she can't... If she pushes Brovar out, Brovar will still be in the lane, I believe. Maybe not. Yeah. And it looks like we do have two viewers right now. So, um, you know, feel free to say stuff in the chat and, you know, we'll, I'll try and keep an eye on the chat and uh, we can talk. If you have any thoughts, feel free to share them. And yep. welcome to the stream. Oh, we have three now. Three now. Akuti took a skirmish action. Oh, we have the Whisper of Nupton from Sethru. So I'll give her a free worship action, allowing her to also lead on that lane. Yep, so gonna just kill two minions here, unless he flips a minus one on, on the second one. Which I don't believe he had any, but I don't remember. <laughs> he does have Time Warp in his deck. Ah, okay. I don't ah. remember how many of them. I can pull that up real quick right here. Uh, he has two time warps on Setheru, which is a hero he did bring. And he also... Oh, no. Yeah, so he has two, but he did not flip either of them. <laughs> and then led from hand uh, with the last action as you... Yeah. Yep, just that extra push really helps out. She moves up. She's going to use a, do a standard move for her, which is probably move. Oh, she attacked with plus zero, but Gregos has barring the way. That's a card you don't see very often. No, no, you don't. Gregos bringing out all the tricks today. Yes. <laughs> And, um, yeah. by the way, is there like a, like a squeaky toy going on in the background I'm hearing? <laughs> oh, let's, I will make sure that I'm muted real quick. <laughs> yes, I might just have to move a little bit. My dog has a tennis ball right now. <laughs> <laughs> and a squeaky one at that. Yeah. Well, 
at least your dog is having fun. <laughs> yes, that's an important thing. Yeah. Uh, I missed it. How did Estrita manage to kill that uh that minion? Oh, oh, the bar in the way, the bar in the way prevented the spawn, not the kill. So yes, he still killed the minion, yes. but just didn't spawn one. Yeah. Yep, correct. So kill, so moved, attacked, and led. Oh, Brovar's oh. car is now showing up as uh, from sideways, so it's from deck. So it was Brovar led from deck, Astrida led from hand. I don't know if that's the case. And the only reason I say that is because Eric only has four cards in his hand. And he hasn't played anything. Yeah, I don't know why that card is sideways then, but it does look like they were both from hand then. Okay, well, that card is showing up as from deck, but I'm pretty sure they were both from hand. Um, Shafati goes with a Warship, Skirmish, and a lead. Predicted with that. I did not see what he did with the Predict, but then led from deck, so I'm assuming he just left it on top and it was a 3. But... Yeah. That's what I would imagine as well. Alright. Frail skirmishes forward, attacks a minion in lane one, and then probably a lead from deck knowing Eric. Leads from deck. <laughs> yeah, I would say Grey Ghost is the most notorious yellow player in Sky Tear, and Eric is the most notorious control player, so no surprises happening so far with Eric playing very controlly and Grey Ghost playing yellow. Yep, no surprises there. Grey Ghost pretty much only plays Nefton, which is more power to him. He knows the faction like the back of his hand at this point. Yep. Interesting thing with that um that frail position though. Eckert does have the will have be able to push frail. But frail will either be in lane one or lane three. So my guess is depending on what Shilobi does, Eckert might push frail into a different lane. Yeah, I would say at this point there is a there's an advantage. There's a reason to actually push out Brilvar now. Because Astria is already led. So if he can push him in the lane two, then it's just another dead lead card. Yes. We are we are assuming these players have um sportsmanship and are not gonna be stream sniping, right? So that means you you are seeing their hands and we can share that, or should we not share it just to be safe? <laughs> uh, I'm not going to share just the I don't yeah I was given the powers but I don't really I really haven't even looked at the hands because I'm zoomed in so oh, okay. far I was going to say you know if you're, you're telling, if Eckert has fast Eckert can push Brovar out but we don't know if yep. he has fast or not well you might if you look at the hand because you can see it but we don't know yeah <laughs> yeah. I wonder can they so because I'm not the one streaming can they actually see my hand or my screen of they, me zooming out they can't see yours. They only see my screen, not yours. Okay, I was just making sure. So yeah, you can move around and do whatever whatever the heck you want as long as it doesn't interfere with their game. Yep, <laughs> sounds good. That last part's important. Alright, so... Grey Ghost with um, Sathu right here. Skirmishes, Warships. Placing all those illusions right in lane 3 right there. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's interesting I don't know why he chose that hex specifically because if it was one hex to the left a cootie would be able to be within range for reasons but where it is it's within range of Eckert I'm not sure if Eckert is planning to cast something from that illusion or not well possibly 
what could be happening is... Oh wait, no, Eckert's not within range right now either. Hmm. Eckert is within range of Seth Resolution. Yep, she is. Yeah, so I'm not sure if there's something that... I guess, or maybe Seth Rue wants to cast something from his illusion targeting Eckert. Oh wait, Seth Rue doesn't have any mana. Oh, Seth Rue played the Whisper already. Maybe Shafati will cast something from Seth Rue's illusion targeting Eckert. Anyway, Seth Rue's last action was a lead from deck. So, Seth Rue and Akuti both have a lead in that lane. One of which was from hand, one of which was from deck. Interesting. And then Shilabi moves, attacks a minion, and leads. Yep, I'm not looking at this. I'm not sure why he double led. Maybe, maybe he just had a free action on the one lane. That's what it looks like to me, because Ashrita is in cover. Yeah. And I guess he didn't want to expect move his mage further up and expose him because you know, 14 health, zero armor. So I'm guessing yep. just, okay, I have a free action, might as well do it. Yeah, pretty much. That makes sense. And I wasn't paying attention. I don't know if he predicted with that skirmish, so he might have also seen the card too and just figured out, I'll flip through this card anyway, so I might as well just lead with it. I don't know. Yeah, that's a possibility. I didn't see it either. Looks like Eric has a lead with every single character. Yep, three of them from he... hand. Yep. Rovar, Ashrita, and Shilavi led from hand, and Freyo led from deck. In knowing Eric's deck, there's a high possibility that that blind lead is also a three. Yep, Shafathi led off a predict, so I'm assuming that lane 3 is currently tied, and lane 2 is currently tied. Now I think, yeah, it's Gregos' turn. He's probably thinking through right now what, so he has Ekrit. He could, so right now, you have tied lane on lane, oh wait, no, lane 2 he is winning by 1. Oh, he does have an extra hero there, yeah. So he's winning lane two, which is the outflank lane. So he's he's good there. They're tied in lane three, but he's losing lane one in the dome. Mm -hmm. I think if I'm him here, I just move into the dome, drop my illusion, and lead if I have a three. Yeah. Just to tie the dome, because I think that dome is going to be more important than the uh, than lane one. Yeah, I may say with how long it is taking for decision. Well, and I can see hands. I'm going to assume... I don't think that Akira can get to Brill Bar and push him out. I don't Ooh. think it's possible. Oh. Went for lane three? Hmm. So he's giving up both the dome and lane one here to get some damage on Shilavi. I'm he's... definitely surprised. I guess he's beginning his uh, bloodlust slash tamer strategy. Oh, he's making it so with the, the terror, nobody can he can't be moved at all. Is one thing. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah. yeah, all of his heroes are can't be moved by the terror, and Shafati is blocking that cover hex. So. Yep. That said, Shafati can still, or the Terra can still go adjacent to both Setheru and Akuti. Can get an attack and slow them both. Can, yep. still, can still disarm one of them, even if can't move them. Yep. I'm really surprised by the placement of mid lane. I wasn't expecting that, but I mean, I can see why he really, it looks like he really wanted to win lane three, lane two, get up that lane pressure, it looks like. Yeah, rather than tying the dome, he decided to lose the dome but win lane three, so. Yeah, I would say it'd be, yeah, if he would have had a fast card, he would have probably pushed up Brilvar, taking the dome. 
This also does give him one damage on the tower. Yeah. Um, the of lane three, and it allowed him to get some damage on. Um, so I mean, either way, it's either a win and a loss or two ties. So it's kind of a net even. Although he what he did give up is a you know a whole terror activation for a little bit for different positioning and damage on Shilavi. Yeah. And uh, I see in, in chat here we have uh, the Dusk Horizon. Hello. And Chris, uh, yes, Eric is playing Control. Shocker, I know. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, deck lists are posted in the description if you want to see them. Um, we talked about them at the beginning of the stream, but um, I think that was before I shared the link. <laughs> All right, so what is the terror going to do? They're still gotta resolve the lanes. Yeah, they haven't flipped over Sethru's yet, which doesn't really matter at the end of the day. I guess I should zoom out to see these leads here. So Fryo's blind lead was a chasm. Sethru yep. did. Er, that's uh, Embrovar led with a wind blast. Uh, yeah, except through his bind lead was a whisper of nothing, which, as we said, doesn't matter. He just wanted to get rid of it, is what it comes down to. Because of the plus zero modifier, and it's not a three pip. That makes sense. Yeah, so, Grey Ghost got the point on outflank and pushed that token away from his tower, so that's gonna make it a little bit more difficult for, uh, Eric to go for outflank. I mean, not impossible, obviously, but it's gonna take a little bit longer. However, he yep. did push lane 1 all the way up, so he could start threatening Nexus um, if he so chooses. Uh, well, he has to first get through the tower, but yeah, he could try and push through lane 1 for Nexus or try and stabilize outflank and go for it that way. Grey Ghost is actually pushing two of the lanes right now and has some damage on Shilavi, so I would say he definitely does have an advantageous position here, but we still haven't seen the terror activation yet. Interesting. Okay, he's putting down. Oh, he's oh. attacking Hagrid's illusion. I was like, why wouldn't you go next to two heroes? So you can slow them both. Because you're going to slow them both anyway. Yep. <laughs> and yeah, that, that was, was not that not good for Grey Ghost. Yep, and that was a disarm on a cootie as well, which means if he tries to kill a minion. Well, first he has to get in range of a minion, but and he's slow, so we have to use a skirmish to get in range, and then an attack with a disarm. So he would need to flip at least a plus one to kill the minion. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, not a good, not a good round for Gregos. That ending part wasn't. Yep, and Sethru is all the way back in the corner, slowed as well. Um. Which means it's going to be difficult for Satharu to be able to attack Shrita if that's what he wants to do. Because he would have to use two actions to get adjacent, or use some other card or other hero to get adjacent or push a Shrita out of that spot. So, round one, I do think Gregos won it, but his uh, those conditions and positioning are definitely got awkward at the end there going into round two. Yep. Luckily for him, nothing's too far pushed up that it's hard to get to, if that makes sense. Yep. He won both the lanes by one. So he won them, but kept them close. <laughs> yep. Yeah, for people who haven't played, um, who aren't very experienced, haven't played a lot, there sometimes if you win a lane by too much, it can make it awkward for you because you have to move forward to get to them. So sometimes winning by a little bit is better than winning by a lot. Well, we have Gregos looking through his discard pile right now. Hmm. 
Yeah, I didn't see any ultimates flipped at all, unless I missed anything. So I think all of the ultimates are still in play for both players. I mean, obviously not until turn three, but... Yep. I don't... Correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think that Gregos has Psychic Shields in his deck. Uh, I will verify that right now. Um, he has two Psychic Shields on Habarat, which he did not bring. Okay. So he does have them, but not in this matchup. And I think that kind of makes sense. Psychic Shield against uh, against any deck Eric plays probably isn't the most useful thing. <laughs> No, if you flip it, that's great. If you draw it, yeah, it's a completely dead card. Yeah, I mean, it can be useful against, like, a Eckerd ultimate, or a, a Shilavi ultimate, or a Frail ultimate, or a, a, a Nourish from Frail to damage. He does have Nightmares Incarnates on Shilavi, so there are a few hits, but not much, but he doesn't have them anyway. Yep. As I'd say, Nightmares, I'd guess, would probably be more for killing minions anyways. I would agree with that. Or Illusions, actually. Oh yeah, I suppose you could kill Illusions as well. We you know, uh... You know, Eric won't will go out of his way to target illusions. We've already seen it once. Yes, we've seen it once. I was, yeah, that was a good play by Eric. Yeah, that's why he's playing and we're not. Yep, exactly. <laughs> yeah, what I would have done is I would have went one hex over, slowed both people, probably attacked someone disarmed. The play he did way, makes way more sense. Yeah, I would have done something similar except. I did, would have done the slow, and then either done the attack and disarm, or I would have moved and given one of my own heroes frenzy. Yep. Oh, so he's, it looks like he's doing the same thing with Brovar they did last turn, which is worshipping. Or did he worship? I saw him he, move and lead. He worshipped, worshipped Shilavi. He shapeshifted yep. Shilavi. Shilavi healed, got back up to 17. Okay. The difference is this time, the spot he moved into, Ekrit can actually push Brilvar without um, needing to move at all. Yeah, just a worship action. Yeah, but that does put the illusion adjacent to Brilvar, which means he might be able to do something to get rid of that illusion. Um, let me check yep. his deck real quick here. If I remember correctly, his deck list almost exclusively has two pips and three pips. Yes. He has two nourishes and underground tunnels. Yeah. Everything else is two and three. So he doesn't have so you can't have a shield slam. And Nightmares Incarnate, Brovar doesn't have yellow mana. Yes, yeah, so Brovar won't have any ways to respond to get rid of that if Gregos tries to do that. Yeah. Um, now, if Shilavi or Ashita moves into the dome, he could have a Nightmares, or alternatively, someone could just move into that hex to prevent the illusion yeah. from being placed. Well, it looks like a cootie's going. Or, Eric does have the flux. He could, in response to the warship, try and, like, chasm or something to move Eckert oh, yeah. out of that line. So then he has to use another Eckert, another action to get. Yep. Do you know if he has three chasms? Because he's used two already. He does have three chasms in his deck. Okay. So yeah, he could. And also, if he does that in response to the warship, it'll not only move Eckert out of place, but it'll move Eckert out of range of being able to place the illusion there. So that would be a pretty good play if he does have the third chasm. Cootie moved up with a skirmish action, because she's slow. Grey goes to a worship. So this might be where we see a Nightmares Incarnate. Yep, we might see here.
Doesn't look like it, so it's a t an attack. Did flip the plus one, so did get the kill even through the disarm. And the plus one on the other minion. Yep, we could also double kill. We could also see a sinkhole from Frail to move aggro to. Oh yeah. I think one of those has been... I'll look through the discard pile real quick. I think there's only one of those gone. Yep. It looks like only one sinkhole has been used. Could also see a sinkhole from Brilvar to keep himself in the dome. That'd be a cool play. <laughs> yeah. Or just move himself back after being pushed out. Yeah. <laughs> Frail is just going to keep trucking up that le that right side for me. Lane one. Yep. So move, attack, to kill a minion. And then probably just delete here. Oh, no, we got to go with the presence and then delete. <laughs> yep, casting presence. So what will he be at? Uh, Could you do me a favor and move the uh, round marker to two? Yeah, sounds good. So he potentially has one, two, three, four, five with presence, eight to one right now. Assuming that is a three, which is probably a reasonable assumption considering it was a presence and a lead from, uh, yeah, a lead from deck after presence and also it's Eric's deck. Yes. <laughs> At minimum, it's a two. <laughs> Eight to one, so Grey Ghost will probably try and do something about that. Yeah, I think he'll have he'll have to reinforce in some sort of way. Yep. We could see Ek probably Shafati skirmish over, get a predict off of the illusion lead and maybe attack Frail, or maybe just move, attack a minion in lead, or Eckert will move, attack a minion in lead, something like that. Attacking a minion would drop down to seven, moving in, and leading is four, so at that point it would be seven to four. As it is now, it's 8 to 1. Minion would absorb 1, so that's 7 damage that we get through. So, as long as he prevents 3 of it. Yeah. He just wants to make sure that the tower does not get one-shotted, and he's all good. Right. So, a skirmish from Shafati predicting um, a lead and attack on Frail wouldn't be unreasonable. Even though he doesn't kill that minion, he would still protect the lane, get some damage in. If he wants to go more aggressive for the heroes, that would be the way to do that. Or he could just yeah. go after the he could just get the minion and make sure, you know, just a little bit extra insurance for next round. Looks like Sethru is acting now. Activating now. Yeah, I'm not sure what he's gonna do with Sethru. I'm going to assume it's probably going to be something related to lane 2. Let's see, can he, if he skirmishes, can he, okay, if he skirmishes, he's within range of a minion. Yep. I, I'm not a, I don't love activating Sethru so early in the, oh, he's going Shafati instead. Okay. So he so, moves. He's going to yep. attack minion. Yep, he decided to go for the minion play rather than the uh, predict and damage on Frail play. Ooh, plus three. That was set the result of it. Mm-hmm. That would have been a nice card to lead with. <laughs> yes, yes, it would have. Unfortunately for his positioning, he couldn't get to a minion and skirmish. Yep. He does lead from hand, though, so uh, we, I believe that makes the math 7 to 5. 
three, four, yes, five, this is three, correct. four, seven. Yep. Yep. And Gregos has one minion there, so he would only his tower would only take one damage, um, unless something else changes. Yep, and that's a good situation for Gregos to be in, because if he yeah. can hold off that, and then push lane two up again, Eric's sitting in a bad spot. I think it's kind of the situation where I think both players are kind of okay with it. You know, Eric's still getting damage in, still, you know, gets to draw his card and can focus in other places. Um, and Gregos is like, all right, cool. It's only one damage. I can focus other places, you know, just minimize the damage here while I win other places. So I think it's kind of a mutually good situation for both people. Well, it looks like Eric's going. He takes out minion. He's a spawn in a minion. He actually gets it this time. No barring the way. <laughs> Correct. And leads. So, the street is staying in that cover hex, which means unless Gregos has some way to get rid of that slow, he's going to have to use two actions to get adjacent to Estrita. I guess what he could do, if he want, really wants to do something to Estrita, he could worship to move the illusion adjacent to Estrita. Yes. Yes, he could. Probably more likely that he just skirmishes, attacks a minion, and leads. Yeah, I think that's the more likely option. At this point, I'm kind of... Because he's already used Fathi and didn't attack, I'm kind of assuming that he's just going to try and go for outflank and get a little bit of damage in over time. Yeah, he could... Um, Estrita is the lowest extra hero. He could do something with um, with Eckert to push Estrita out of the cover hex, too. Oh, yeah, he could. If he sets himself upright with Eckert, he could push Estrita out of the cover hex and take out minion yeah. on that lane and then he I... could actually lead in the middle uh he would need a whisper to do that because that would be oh yeah back. yep he would so i don't know if that's actually his best play then but he could he could still do that if he won't have a lead in the middle but he will have two heroes in the middle yeah um but he is going with sethiru first so Worshipping to move that illusion. Oh, never nope, mind. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, he probably has a really good card in his hand if he's willing to spend on them worshipping instead of leading or attacking. Yeah, what what kind of stuff could he have? Uh, two mana stuff, nightmares, redirect, materialize. Well, it kind of yeah, it kind of depends on if he wants if we think that he wants to do a move type of deal or if he's just trying to clear minion. I agree. If materialize. He's, if he's to, yeah. Time warp. Gosh, he's materialized. I have not seen that card in action. I so I've played against Grey Ghost quite a bit. And materialize has come in clutch quite a few times. Yeah, I mean, I think the main reason I just haven't seen it much is because yellow has kind of been um, absent from the meta for a bit. So yeah, I just and it's really only good when you have. I mean, it's best when you have four yellow heroes, but I would say you really need you need at two. It's kind of underwhelming, and at three, you can justify it. I think, but you don't really see that these days. I think with this new expansion coming out. Um, with all the with the two new yellow heroes and all the new blue yellow and red yellow cards, I think we'll probably be seeing a lot more yellow, and with that, probably a lot more materialized coming. Yes, I'd agree with that because materializes it has a good effect of you know especially on the three lane map 
where it's it's big map. It's really hard to get across from, you know, the the your advantage side to the other side. It's pretty difficult. Materialized Riel just lets you teleport, which is an awesome effect for them. Yeah. Speaking of um, the new set, um, have you been following any of these spoilers? Yes. Yes, I have. What are your thoughts so far on um, the Untamed expansion? So, so far, is, I'm thinking... It is Untamed, right? Or is that the other one? I, think, one it, I, I think it's Untamed. Okay. <laughs> I'll pull... I'm going to look at the... Pull up the cards real quick just so I know what I'm... What the names of the cards no, are. No, Untamed was the last one. Is this um, Unforgotten, then? I, I can't remember the names. That sounds right. <laughs> So looking at both the blue here, new blue yellow heroes look pretty good. Is it Kep Kepax? Kepiax and Haral. Yep, Kepiax. She is looking. I don't know if it's a she or he. Doesn't really matter at the end of the day. But that character is looking pretty strong to play with Seth through. So. Just real quick here, uh, Shilavi is activating. He just moved into that cover hex between the Terror, Akuti, and Shilavi right up in Grego's business and predicts. That was attacking Setheru. This is a very aggressive play for Eric. Yes. Oh, Setheru plays Time Warp from his illusion. Yep. Yes, that is... Uh... That's an aggressive play for Eric. I don't. That's kind of surprising. Yep, and this is, and then he does that, and now Eric's like, "See, this is why I never go for attacks. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I never go for heroes. Correct. Look, I just wasted two actions and a presence for this. Never doing it again, ever." <laughs> that was a great play, though, with the time warp from the illusion. Yes. Yeah, Sethru has a whole lot of tricks of just teleporting. You know. Four, three hexes with his illusion. In this case, it was only two. Yeah. <laughs> so Shalavi moved, attacked. What was the third action? Uh, looks like it was a lead from hand. Okay. So all four of Eric's heroes led from hands. Are you sure it's from deck, not hand? Because Sorry, I, I yeah. meant to say deck. All four heroes led from deck. Yeah, and they're probably all threes, I'm guessing. Uh, Frails was a predicted one, so I'm especially confident yeah. in that. Shilavi yeah. did predict also, but then attack, so I'm not sure if he kept both cards on top or not. So yeah, I, Probably reasonable to assume that was also a three, though. Um, Brovar and Estrita, I would say... Minimum two, decent chance of three. Yeah, almost zero percent chance of one. Yeah, not not fully zero though, but pretty close, I would think. Yeah, I haven't done the math. Three yep. out of twenty-eight, but then also cards have already been flipped. So, or sorry, three out of forty. Where did I get twenty-eight from? Gregos has Ekrit. Oh, Ekrit plays Materialize. Where are you going, Ekrit? I bet you she's going on to the number two lane. Probably on top of Seth Resolution. Yep, that's what I'd imagine. Because from there, he has... Oh, wait, no, that's not the best. Hmm. I think the better play would be to Worship first. No, wait, that wouldn't work either. Yeah, I was going to say, if Sethru decided to not move in that hex size in, you could teleport there, worship the Hea, Street and Brilvar into the dome, and then just hit up the lane. Yeah, he could have done a move, worship, place the illusion, then materialize, and then attack. Yes. Street is playing shove. Oh, got to shove Sethru. On top of the on, illusion, so Eckert can't go there. 
that's yeah, that's not good for Grey Ghost. That's a good play, and yeah, I was curious why he chose that spot with Sether anyway. I'm assuming so that way he could attack Strita next turn, um, without yeah, having I to was... move, but uh, it kind of backfired. Yes, yes, it did. It was an aggressive play, though. You know, gotta appreciate the aggressive plays. So now, where does Yovza materialize? That's the question. He only I has two other options. I could see a Kudis or Seth. Actually, it doesn't make a difference whether it's Kudis or Frothy. He could move adjacent to Brovar, worship, and then push both Brovar and Ashrita into lane two. <laughs> yep, he could. Who did not Because right now, Sethru is... Yeah, because of that play, it's he is not sitting in a good spot. Because his thought process is probably jump in there, wipe the minions, lead. And then he's winning by what? He'd be winning by three on that lane. Now that he's doing it like this, I am not sure what his plays would be. If he had moved onto Shafathi's illusion, he could have moved to the hex between Shilavi and Ashrita, worshipped past Ashrita, and then hit the illusion, or hit the minion and Ashrita. Yeah. That was a really nice shove play by Eric there. Yes, yes it was. Yeah, if Grey Ghost would just decide not to be adjacent, then he would be sitting in a really good spot. Yeah, Leozar says he wants some blood. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't know if that's going to happen in this game. Yeah, uh, I mean, Dragos didn't attack on Shilavi round one. Um, and then Shilavi went for an attack on Sethru, which uh, didn't resolve. So Ekrit worshipped. It looked like he put a mine that he predicted and got rid of a time warp off of the uh, off of the predict from Shabathi's illusion. Yep. Warships. Yeah, I'm just gonna push Shilavi in lane one, I guess. Oh, okay. Well, if he does, yeah, if he does it that way, then he is taking out lane. He'll have one, two, three, four. Yeah, but the tower already took one damage, so that would win him the yeah that yes would that would blow win. up the tower that would blow up the tower and that sets gray ghost as at a good spot there at this point he knows he's losing lane two so why not just lose it by a lot right yeah bring it closer to a cootie as well yep yeah no that's a good play by gray ghost if he doesn't narix tap down on mana uh he just played a Speak with the Spirits. So he's probably a Shapeshift, and I'd imagine Predict, just to see what two cards he's drawing. Yep, try and stack his jaws a bit. So that's the thing. Gregos is going to blow up that tower in lane three, um, but he's losing every other zone. So losing the dome again, he's going to, Eric is going to get to activate the Terror again. Yep. Um, and then he's also going to push lane 1 and lane 2. He's going to get to draw 3 cards. So, Gregos is, you know, the closest to winning, I would say, after this. But Eric is getting some some incremental advantages that are that will only start to pile up. Yeah, losing, yeah, losing 3 lanes is difficult on this map. That and also next turn is turn three, which means Eric's deck is gonna be fully turned on. Yes, correct. Yeah, when he gets a turn three, it's pretty much he'll always have some sort of good counter in hand, it seems like. Yeah. I would say he's definitely oh, and we got a quick shot from Shafati too. Oh, okay. So what is that now? Two, three, six to five? Yes, Eric's only going to win by one. Yeah, which means no damage to the tower because of the minion there. 
Yep. I'm surprised they used that. Eh, no reason not to. You have the mana. Yeah, I suppose. I, I was just thinking for next round having it in hand. But I could... no, that makes sense. Yeah, but, you know, you wanted your mana for three mana cards, probably, so. Yep. He also might have, might have Shafadi's ultimate, and so says, I'm not using the quick shot anyway. Yep, I guess Sethru could sense. use it, but. Yeah. But yeah, so I think Grey Ghost is definitely um, threatening Victory a little more, more easier and probably a bit ahead on board, but turn three Eric with a full fist of hands is uh is it's kind of scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is. And the thing is if Gregos doesn't take out the Nexus I mean if he doesn't take out the Nexus this turn and let's say that he Eric does enough damage on lane one takes out the tower, well that's not good for Great Ghost. He's pr probably not going to win a punch out on towers. Yeah, or that's on a, the Nexus. That's a good point, Michael. Um, uh, I think pushing Shilavi into the dome would have been a bit better, rather than pushing Shilavi into the other lane. Oh yeah, that would have made a little more sense, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean the tower think... was getting pushed all the way anyway, but now Shilavi's going to be adjacent to the control token. Um, Maybe maybe the reason why I put her there was so that the terror can spawn here and grab Seth through. That's what I was just thinking. I, yeah, preventing the uh the terror from spawning there. But Yep. Oh, and then he placed the two minions adjacent to Shilavi. That's interesting. I would have assumed he would have moved one of them away so that way Shilavi can't just worship and get both minions. He might, yeah. The only thing about that is he might be setting up as bait, almost, of saying, hey, I want you to take out these minions, waste your actions, so that you're not putting as much pressure elsewhere. It also means a Shrita won't be able to spawn a minion that way. At least not in yeah. that lane. Yep, so I think he knows that it really doesn't matter. He's going to get them anyways, so... And if Shalavi takes them out, then an extra minion doesn't spawn. Yep. So yeah, yeah anyway, poor... back to the uh, Unforgotten expansion. What are your uh, thoughts on that? <laughs> it's looking... I think it's looking promising. I really like... Yami's Betrayal looks like a cool card. Yeah, I being agree. Able re being able to reduce that line of sight by two, I think that's interesting. I mean, I don't think it's going to come up very often with Kumaya. But with Kumaya in comboing that together and just saying, no, you can't target anything. <laughs> target hero is blind. Yep. <laughs> no, I agree. That is cool with Kumaya. But even so, it's going to be one of those plays that's going to... It just It's going to counter so many different effects. Yep. Like, a lot of yeah, people exactly. do stuff from, like, two or three away, and it's just like, nope, you can't... Your line of sight isn't there. It'll counter any ranged attack other than, like, an Ekrit wind barrier thing but it'll yep. it, sh it can do so many different things and then i mean i don't know how useful it is but it's a nice little bonus just to find the mark yep i don't think the marks gonna be all that big but yeah it's just it's a nice bonus might as well throw it in there then the yeah. other card that i think is interesting is discovering the deep that one looks like an eric card <laughs> <laughs> full control Right, looking at the top four cards, having your opponent make the two piles. That one seems interesting. I don't know if Eric was gonna let play it. It's only two mana. Yeah, I, yeah, only two mana. Uh, I don't know if that makes a cut. Yeah, no, I think it's a a great card, and it definitely seems like an Eric card. Yeah. <laughs> Both the three pips right now, I'm not too sure about. I'm not saying that they're bad cards, but. Hobrat's Oath, Explosive Damage, I don't know how... That might be good. Like, for an invasion play. Or not invasion, Siege. 
yeah, just getting that. Yeah, I, I do. That was that's one thing that I do think it really makes Siege a lot more playable. Yep, and that's about the only because a lot of the times you're not going to bring down a tower the one damage. If you do, then yes, this card's really that's going to be really good. But as it stands right now, I don't know if that's the best. If we were playing by the old Sky Terror 1.0 rules, when you do a tower damage, you draw a card if you remember that. And then yep. the final the final one, Deny Faith. I think that it's I feel like it's gonna be kinda of like refract. Where it's kinda of that three pip slot. And you're kind of just waiting on your opponent to play card. Uh, I think you'll be better than Refract, but my big thing with it is, is that it it has an identity, but like the heal three for it, it just seems like an added effect of a two cost canceling card would be too strong. At three cost, it's a little too weak. So they it kind of seems like the added three HP is just kind of thrown in there as just a bonus. Yeah, I feel like maybe if they instead of adding, adding that part, just made it a plus one or something like that. Yeah. It might have been a little more, but little little more better. Um, <laughs> Sethra gets attacked by the terror for yeah. three damage. That says it does. It does read counter target sinkhole, and that's always good. Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> Back to the game. Um, so yes, got that attack on Setheru. So I had to move to get there because obviously the cover hex that Shelby was in prevented that. So I'm assuming that was the reason for that play. Yeah. Um, then the move, the attack, and then the disarm. Yeah. Once again, maybe that's why we're not in the <laughs> in the finals. We don't see the we don't see the big picture of that always. Yeah, I mean, so either, regardless of where Shalivi was, the end result with the the lane and the dome would have been the same. So, yeah. it didn't really make a difference. So, it was just a matter of which positioning was better. So, I actually like yep. that um, that spot. Yep, that makes sense. One, The one other thing it does do, though, which may or may not be relevant, is Shalivi now has line of sight to a lot of stuff, while if Shilvi was in the dome, Shilvi wouldn't have as much, so it does potentially open up more place for Eric. Yep. So looking around, if Eric has a wind blast, that's going to be really key to just nuking those minions in the middle, getting rid of three of them. Because they're put up Kind of set up perfectly where you can take out exactly three. Or you could take out two in a Cootie's Illusion, which doesn't really help him all that much. <laughs> or you could take out one a Cootie's Illusion and Eckert's Illusion. Yes. Or one or... Eckert's Illusion and Shafati's Illusion. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. Double Wind yeah, Blast. So if has... <laughs> yeah, if he has a Wind Blast, how many does he have in his discard? That's the question. Double Wind Blast could get rid of four minions and two illusions. Yes. He has two Wind Blasts in the discard. He probably won't have a Double Wind Blast then. Unless no, there's... probably not. He doesn't have a Refracted, all right? <laughs> I don't think he does. All right, so so we can um, cross that yeah. off the list of possibilities. We have a question. Did they change the rules? Can Estrita spawn on a destroyed tower or no spawning on that lane? No spawning, I believe. I thought I think I remember them changing that. Or were they just talking about changing that? That's what I thought. I was like, did they change that because it was confusing? Dang it. Yep. I uh, thought it was no spawning, but I guess I don't know. Maybe they did change it. I no, remember one point, reading it definitely no spawning. about it. Let me go search through my Giacomo newsletters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'll jump back to the other game. Thanks. Sounds good. Uh, 
So it was more recent than that. I mean, I can. I'll message in the rules. Here we go. Do me the pleasure. Okay, so it's not them. I don't see anything about it. I didn't remember anything changing. This is a a good question. I'm like trying to like figure out what I can search in the Discord, but it's like so vague. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not really sure. I don't remember them talking about that, but at the same time, I'm not, you know, scouring the Discord at all times of the day. So they could have said something. I definitely I remember did... reading about it at something about that at some point, but. Yeah. Yeah, I messaged in the rules chat. I'm assuming that tape isn't around, but I included him in the message to say, hey, can we spawn minions with Estrida on a lane without tower? <laughs> I would I would imagine the answer is no, just for consistency's sake of not spawning minions on a lane, but yeah, they might have changed it. Oh wait, they're theoretically the um comprehensive rules have been kept up to date, so I can try looking through that. Yep. Uh, Tapeworm is usually really good about keeping that stuff up to date, so now technically you could with Astrida, not right now because how the game state is. But for our viewer viewers out there, if you did not know, you can if you can see two hexes two control points on this map. You can spawn on either lane. You don't need to be on the lane to spawn a minion, as long as you can see the other control hex. That was actually something that I would do with my deck, is I used, what was it, Unburial Rites? Yeah, Unburial Rites, and I'd kind of position myself between two lanes, break a whole bunch of pillars, and then spawn minions on actually both lanes, or... Put them all in one lane for a big snowball effect. Yeah, so Michael is saying in the chat, I believe you can spawn only not during minion phase. Confirmed in the FAQ. How does the spawn keyword work? I don't see the uh, FAQ though. Um, looking in the... Um, the comprehensive rules I'm seeing players cannot spawn minions when resolving a lane without a friendly tower. Okay. Well, technically off of that, it sounds like you could. Yeah. Um, I does don't that mean that, see anywhere they can't. Does that mean that with card effects you can? Yes, I believe with card effects and um, hero effects, you can after that change. Minions, anywhere else it might be towers and nexuses? Uh, nothing there. 
and uh, blah, blah, blah. yeah, as far as I can tell, generate effect origin. Yeah, I think it works. Yeah, I think it does too, based off of that reading there. Yeah, let me just find that again, since I lost it. Uh, minions placement. Oh, yep. I Yeah. Baraka Boy just posted in there. Yep, he can do that. It says a tower is not needed to spawn minions with effects. Instead, a tower in a lane is necessary to spawn in that lane during the minions phase. Okay, so it should be able to work. Do you think... Huh. I'm assuming that they heard. Or not heard, but um, saw the rules chat. So, yep, Eric's moving in the <laughs> middle. Like I said, just do it! <laughs> yep. They move. Looks like he's probably going to attack. Oh, Gregos plays another bar in the way. <laughs> Gregos is probably saying, just do it, I don't carry their way. <laughs> Yeah, he just said, yeah, I don't care what the ruling is. You can just, let's say, yeah. <laughs> All this for nothing. <laughs> oh, what we did miss, though, is Song of the Siren on Sethru. Oh, yes. Good catch on that. Yeah, so no Seth. Uh, Sethru should not be disarmed, though. Yeah. Yeah, I won't. Yeah, I'm not sure if we're supposed... Yeah, we're... Yeah, I'll just let him play it out. I don't think... Yeah, um, he's not supposed to be. Yeah. There we go. Yep, and we got the confirmation from Tapeworm now. Okay. So that was a rule change at some point a couple months ago. I don't remember exactly when, and it, it kind of, I don't think it was very well, I don't think the information was very well distributed. Um, but yes, in case people weren't aware, uh, you can spawn minions and lanes without towers, just not during the minion phase. And there's the wind blast we were talking about. Yep. So what's Hootie he going for? Hootie <laughs> playing a wind blast on lane two. Oh, it's take oh, out. it's Gregos doing the wind blast. <laughs> yep. So that's gonna take out three minions and Shalavi. It's a deal, what two damage to her? Yep. Yep, and can't redirect because nobody or no heroes or Sethu illusion adjacent to a cootie. Yep. Yeah, it's a solid play. So he moved. He did that. Now I'm kind of wondering what he's going to do. Is he just going to attack that last minion? Attack that minion. I guess a, uh, a chasm where Sinkhole could have countered that spin blast, though. Yes. Yes, it could have. So, interesting that Eric didn't do that. Not sure if that means he doesn't have one. Prehel uses underground tunnels to put a minion over on lane two. Not sure why that happens now, but okay. <laughs> I 
So I'm not sure if he doesn't have a sink color chasm or just wanted to save it for later. But that would have been a good time to use it. Yep. Why does that underground tunnels happen then? I don't understand either. I like the play. I'm just questioning the timing of it. Maybe... This is maybe what he's thinking. I don't see why he did that. But maybe he's thinking, oh, he's already declared the attack. So he's not going to worship. So he's not going to double wipe him again. But still, I don't know why you won't wait until later in the round. Hmm. Especially because now Freyhel can't use a three. Oh no, there's still the flux in play, isn't there? So she could still use a three mana. Yeah. Well, if anyone in the chat has any ideas. <laughs> or explain 4D chess. <laughs> I know, right, Lothar? So awful. So many times to read FAQs and he played Barring the Way. Living monster. <laughs> <laughs> Your brother That's is a an... monster. Made us waste all that time for nothing. <laughs> That's an Upton way, right? Just trick you in the looking something up and be like, nah, you can't do it anyways. <laughs> he should have just told him yeah it's fine I don't care <laughs> yep saved us all the trouble but now that was a rules lesson for everyone who's watching everyone the knows the more now. you know isn't learning fun see Grey Ghost if you didn't know he's a teacher so maybe he just wanted everybody to have a learning experience uh, how kind of him Yep. All right. Well, while Eric is figuring out what hero he wants to activate, um, any thoughts on the new heroes? So I think I mentioned the new mage. I think that character could be really strong with Sethru. I feel like Sethru is potentially going to be a damage powerhouse come the new set. Because realistically, you could actually play a Shattermind on round one for five damage. If you have both Sethru's illusion out and the new hero's illusion out, having them right next to the same person, and you deal five damage. Now, if you play the Flux with that, that's an extra damage because of the illusion, because it's another card. Then an extra 5 damage if you had another Shattermind. So you can potentially do 11 damage with 2 Shattermines on round 1. And a Flux. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty sweet. I didn't even notice that one. That's, uh, that's a cool play right there. Yeah, that's and, me. And then an attack. <laughs> what do you say? And then you just attack somebody and kill them. <laughs> yep. Alright, so we see Shilavi attack a minion. Move to Move. the dome. Skirmish. Okay, so yeah, get another person on lane. That makes sense. Oh, wind blast. Yep. So he's going for the three minions, not the two in the illusion. <laughs> not the two in the illusion, the Akuti illusion when Akuti's already activated. I think that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. That is not good for Grey Ghost. I was actually about to say, I wonder if uh, Brilvar was going to do like a, or someone was going to shapeshift Shilavi, and then Shilavi was going to blow up two minions with Dance of the Predator, but Windblast is better. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so. What do you think about the new Ranger there, Ryan? I, I think it's cool. I like the, uh, the Chakram effect. The magic chakrams being able to, uh, you know, deal, deal damage to a lot of heroes that are grouped up. You know, I'm like always trying to. I, I like using the terror and movement effects to put heroes together, and then smashing with Golbiarn. So this just gives me gives more ways to hit multiple heroes at once. Yeah. Um, in general, as a blue player, I'm not thrilled by the new heroes. They seem a lot more 
yellow oriented than blue oriented. I would I would agree with that sentiment. Grey Ghost and I actually talked about that the other day. I said the new heroes feel more like they're yellow heroes with a splash of blue effect. Yeah, they don't. Neither of their shapeshift effects affect any of the other heroes, while the yellow ones, you know, they give the they give effects to all of the projected heroes. Yeah. That said, you know, a Haral shapeshifts near a Brovar or a Frail and, you know, still gets all the effects from those heroes that way. So it's not like they don't, there's no synergy at all. And both of those shapeshift effects do seem pretty strong on their own. So they definitely do seem fun that way. But I kind of feel like. It also, I think you could do is you build a blue deck with both of these heroes. Now you have illusions, so things like materialize and um, it was another card I was thinking of that's useful for I'm the not sure. uh, um, illusions. Redirect. But it redirect makes the redirect it to illusion an attack or something. Oh yeah, no, uh, indoctrinate. Our... Oh yes, I don't think I've ever seen that card played. <laughs> um, while we were while we were talking, Eckert moved, worshipped, and then attacked in a line to push Astrida out of lane three. Oh, nice play! I'm sure there's not going to be any like sinkhole or. <laughs> and Eckert played presence in the middle. I'm sure we won't see any, like, sinkhole or anything to move Ashrita back in range, right? Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, I'll look through the discard again. I thought there was only one out at one point. Let's see. One sinkhole in discard. Hmm. Two what about, sinkholes. Three what about, sinkholes. What about an avalanche from Brovar to push Ashrita in range? <laughs> ah, could you... So, does... Avalanche is Brovar's ult. Can you move your own people with it? I don't remember. Yes, you can. You could also move attack Eckert's illusion and then push Eckert out with Brovar. Yep. There's still still plenty of ways for Eric to get back in range with Estrita. But yeah, so I could see a deck with like, say, Hurrah, Kepiax, Shilavi, Brovar, or something like that. So you have a four blue, but you have the two yellows, so you can use Materialize to move your heroes around a bunch, and then Indoctrinate to allow your, uh, your non, your Brovar and Shilavi, or whatever your other two blue ones are, to be projected and affect, be able to use those projected effects so dealing one damage with uh kepiax or flipping extra ones so you can get a triple flip off of shilavi yeah so from your perspective do you see a new suicide squad showing up <laughs> with shilavi <laughs> and the new heroes oh always and now you can play triple sky tear discharge and when you play them you also deal damage <laughs> yes um Love, love I, the bloodshed there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, it'll be... Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, it's definitely something I'll experiment with. Um, you could throw a Kenwi in there as well. <laughs> okay, so Eckert's Illusion just got shot. Hey, how so, about that? How about that? Shilavi, Shilavi, Kepiax, Haral, and Kenwi. And you can shapeshift Kenwi with some blue cards. Yep. <laughs> and then you can you can do the suicide with Kenwi also. <laughs> yes. But yes, anyway, back to the game. Freyhill moved, she attacked an illusion, and then led in the middle. So I'm gonna say based off of that play, Eric probably doesn't can't get Astrida back in the middle. That's what I'm guessing. If he led again. Gregos just has Shafafi left. Oh, that's it. Sorry, I wasn't looking at the chat. Michael, I think that is correct. 
Um, so we're talking about the underground tunnels. Underground tunnels move the, the friendly minion next to an adjacent minion. So we had to do it while the minion was still there. Oh, okay. Does it have to be a friendly minion? Um, yes, another friendly minion. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Thank you, Michael, for pointing out <laughs> what well, we couldn't <laughs> Uh, we just couldn't figure it out. Yeah, yeah, there we go. That makes sense. What I should really have is my card binder in front of me, so I can just flip through all the cards and read the fine print. Yeah, it probably would have helped if I also just, like, pulled the card, like, up on screen and looked at it. <laughs> yeah. Instead of just assuming I know how it works when I haven't looked at the card in several months. Yeah. All right, so Frail has moved into the middle lane as well. So Eric very clearly trying to not lose to Nexus here. Yep. So can Shafathi make it to the mid lane? Because right now there's two minions both. How many minions does Grey Ghost have over here? Two? Two of the two? Could Grey Ghost attack, move Skirmish? I guess he uh, could get into the mid. He could also just materialize. Yes, if he had another materialize, that would be really good for him. But yeah, I'm thinking that he's probably going to win that lane one by like one point if he feels like it, and then he can leave that lane and go somewhere else. Like, he could, I guess he could attack move into the dome and lead in the dome. Maybe finally get a dome capture. We'll see. Yeah, he could also just work on pushing that lane back. I guess there's no real reason to do that because, you know, it's going to take a couple turns before that becomes relevant. Yep. And he's already threatening Nexus anyway, so there's no real reason to do that. Um... He could just if, start attacking heroes. <laughs> yes, he could. I kind of yeah, like just. Hmm. I kind of like just attacking a minion, so that way he wins the lane and gets to draw a card. Then moving into yeah. the dome and leading. Yeah. Yeah, I think he only really has those two options. Is what it comes down to. Or acrobatics to gain fast. Oh yeah. So I wonder what he's gonna do. Maybe he'll just move into the middle. I don't know. He could go after... He could uh, move Skirmish targeting Shilavi, just and then attack Shilavi. Or are you going for Estrita? Hmm. Someone in chat was asking for... um. For more blood, right? Yes, yes they were. Oh, five damage on a street. Up. Hello there, Zargo. How are you doing today? Oh, and he played... Someone just played a Shattermine for three more damage. Oof, so a Strita is not looking good right now. Yeah, it's a shame there wasn't a Sethra illusion over there for one more damage. <laughs> Correct. Um. So I think Eric's. So the only problem right now that I think Eric's facing. Oh, let's see. He's playing an Avalanche. Yep. So skirmished out. Here's the Avalanche. But he's going. After a cootie? Wow. <laughs> what a hmm. bully. So now you attack a minion. Oh, that makes sense. 
because now he's going to for sure win that outflank, right? Yeah, so I'll put him at two out of three. Yep. I was no, trying to see if he could. Play. I was to, trying to think if he could attack a minion and then move into the dome, but he wouldn't win the lane that way. Yep. No, that's a good play. Because what I was about to say before that is, I don't think that Eric has a clear path to victory at this current moment. But now that he played that, that kind of changes the game up a bit. Yep, it's a good he play. Can, he can win in round four. Yeah, and then he is... Unless we see like a flux sinkhole to do something in lane three, it looks like it's going to be a tie in lane three. Yeah, and there won't be a sinkhole because all of them are in the discard. Shafuthi, Shafuthi, Shafathi and Akuti, Shafuthi, um, both led from deck. I'm assuming, I don't remember, but I'm assuming there was some sort of predict from Shafathi's illusion on at least one of them. Shafathi, I know, didn't. I don't remember about Akuti. And then yeah, Frail, Frail led from deck as well. So I guess we'll have to see what the leads are, but assuming the leads are the same, then it is a tie. Yep. But in the middle, Ekrit does have a presence. Yeah, I hope your vacation is going well there, Zarko. Doing, doing fun stuff, I hope. I could go for some sushi. Stop making me think of, f of food. Leozars, it's your fault. But I should get sushi for lunch. Well, I think that Chifathis will serve up some sh sushi here this round. Because <laughs> that street is only at four hit points left. Shafushi. Yep, Shafushi. Oh, Akuti had a three, but she is not in any lane. Yeah. I think rather than Shafati leading, if Shafati had skirmished into the dome, that would have been an interesting play. Because at that point, that would have been a that would have been a potential chance for a tamer kill there. Yeah. Although, bloodlust might just be easier than tamer. <laughs> so Eric is going to need the reshuffles deck. It looks like. Uh, what were the leads? So Shafati and. So Tafrathi had a 2, Akuti had a, a 3. Eric led with two twos. Oh, three twos. All of his leads were twos. Oh, wow. So that's going to be one tower damage in the middle because of Gregos' presence. Yep. Oh. Oh, we had a presence. I missed the presence. Um, but Akuti also had a 3, so that should be 2 damage, right? A cootie is not within range of anything. Oh, right. Sorry, I was looking at Eckert thinking that was a cootie. Yep. That's all good. And then, yeah, <laughs> there's no outsider. Yeah. I will say, yeah, Eric, very clear, he wants the outflank. Yep, so Eric is threatening outflank, and Gregos is threatening Nexus. Um... Eric just needs to win by one, while Gregos needs to win by four, and Eric's deck is probably a little more tuned towards control, so I think Eric does have is in the better position here, but he has a street at four HP. Yeah. <laughs> I would also contend that Eric is probably has an advantage right now, especially because uh... he has six cards compared to four. They need minions in lane three. <laughs> well, at least Eric does. <laughs> or Gregos, sorry. Gregos does. Yeah. As I would say, Eric would like minions in the middle. I mean, the fact that Gregos has minions allows Eric to get a minion. <laughs> Correct. No, barring the way, remember? Oh, yes. He'll have another one. Guaranteed. How many does he have? Only two barring the ways in his deck. Has he shuffled? He has not shuffled, so there won't be a barring the way. 
because he doesn't have any exhumes or anything like that to pull it back. Yep. But now we know the rule. <laughs> so it might yes, be relevant this, this time. <laughs> We have a worship, the heel, as treated to Shafuti. <laughs> Shafushi, Shafuti, I don't know. So sushi. <laughs> Alright, I see chat's having some fun. <laughs> so it looks like Ashrita is going, is, yeah, this makes sense because there are the two minions. Because Seth, or, or Shilavi is in lane three. Shilavi can just get those two minions, so Asrita will focus on lane two. Yep. And we do have a shapeshifter Brovar to uh to taunt Akuti. Imagine if uh if if uh Eric had drawn um a street is ultimate after shuffle oh i guess the cards won't have before the shuffle or after the shuffle yeah i was gonna say what if he just had it two turns in a row here and just made that it so set through set through could go twice crazy. in a row <laughs> i'm going to guess that Astrida is not going to survive the round I don't think so either. If Gregos has even a Shattermind or Nightmares Incarnate, he can just plop down four damage on her. Yes. I guess he can't see her right now. Yeah. That said, so I was saying Eric is in a better position to win because he only needs to win by one and needs to not lose the lane lane three by four. But as long as Gregos doesn't lose lane two by at least one... He can keep going, so he, even if he only... As long as he doesn't lose, and even if he wins lane 3 and only gets 2 damage in, that's, yep. you know, he can still keep progressing himself. So he doesn't need to win right now. And I guess neither does Eric, but it's easier for Eric to win here. Correct. Yep. Yeah, Gregos is definitely fighting an uphill battle on lane 2, because there's 4 minions there compared to 1. Uh, um, Simple wind blast deals with that. Correct. Yeah. I wonder how many wind blasts are in his discard. Yeah, oh, not yeah. Sprad. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Do you know how to fix that, Kirito? Uh, <laughs> you should be able to just group them, but I think at this point, my better just let them do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just let him fix it. <laughs> Oh, I guess the rewind time also does it. Yes. <laughs> no, normally when I mess up, I hit deal. Well, after that, I will be right back. <laughs> <laughs> I would help, but I'm just going to get in the way. They 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 could group. There there, there, there is a, a group button. All right. Well, now we're all fixing, fixing this, so we have a little bit of break here. Um, any um predictions or thoughts from the chat here?
Also, the HUD's a little messed up right now. Um, whoops. This one. Wait, no, other one. And I guess we'll turn the overlay off at this point. It's not doing anything for us. I'll keep the HUD up even though it's not showing everything correctly just because it'll show the flips and cards played. Okay, I am back. Actually, I'm going to see if I can do something about this. Give me a second. Oh, it's going to be yellow here. I'm just going to see if I can do something to fix the HUD here. Uh, no, couldn't fish, fix the turn thing. Did, did I destroy the HUD by spreading the cards? No, Eric destroyed the HUD by... Uh, by rewinding time. Right. Well, I got the heroes to show up on the HUD at least. That's something. And that's why, my friends, we do not mess with time. <laughs> Actually, one other thing I want to try to fix. Okay. Okay, so... Great. Eric used Nourish. I believe targeting Estrita. And Akudi is playing a Redirect. And Estrita is playing a redirect. <laughs> huh. Gregos is thinking, it looks like. Yeah, all the um the HPs and mana values you see on the HUD are not gonna be correct. All the conditions will be though, and you can see the HPs on the tracker, so. Hopefully, oh, everyone wants to build the follow well. And we see Eye of the Storm flipped. Yes. So, I wasn't here. Did did Jafathi skirmish to get to Akudi or move? Uh... I don't know. That might have been right around the time you uh, you broke time. Because he's moving yeah. now, so I'm guessing that was a skirmish. Yeah. Estrita didn't lead, so at this point... I don't Estr know if there's, it really helps to kill her, if that makes sense. Estrita is the same as a minion. <clears throat> yep. Correct. Um, I'm thinking... So... I honestly think that Gregos might just abandon lane 3. Depending on how things go here. I think that's probably accurate. That Shilavi is in such an awkward spot for a cootie. <laughs> yes. Because Akudi would love to move right through that, get over there, warship, and get two minions. Yes. Yeah, that would be it. That is accurate. That is accurate, yep. not Akudi. Oh, yeah. Oops. <laughs> Either way, oh, Eric's, same thing. Eric's moving with Shalabi. Yeah, but blocks that illusion hex still, so. <laughs> but Eckert could hit two minions and push Shalabi. 
into the dome if you wanted. Oh, Dance of the Predator. I'm surprised no, Shilavi. He... I'm surprised. Yeah, I don't. Fry Shilavi didn't um, kill two minions in lane three, and then do that or something. Yeah, I don't know exactly what his plan is. Is he trying to burst down a hero? It could be. Sethru is at eleven, so oh, we could yeah. go two plus two plus four plus plus. So that's eight. All plus, you need to do is get plus three. Eight plus three flips, one of which is two flips. Yep. No, that that makes more sense. And this is before Sethru act activates, so that's going to. If he gets the kill here, that um, I think that will just be game. Yep. So he. Uh, that was two plus one, right? Plus one. Eleven. So that should have been two plus one, eight, and then five. Eight. Yeah, I don't know how he jumped from eleven all the way down to there. Yeah, they got it. <laughs> oh wait, yeah, eight and then five. Yep, they're at the right place. Place now. So now yeah. just an attack needs to flip a single plus one, but yeah. they do. Uh, Gregos does have a lot of mana here with Jafathi and Sethiru, neither of which have played anything yet. So there are definitely could be responses here. A redirect onto the terror. That would be a good play. That actually helped him with his bloodlust condition as well, if that's what he decides he's going for. <laughs> yeah, because hmm. then that would drop Shilvy. That would get Shilvy down, so a street and Shilvy would be both in kill range. He does only have three cards in hand. Yep. What could he have? Uh, redirect. I don't. Uh, no, no chasm available. No wind blast or no ice on me. Nightmare. Time warp. I don't think helps. he has done is moved attack he still gets a skirmish as well he, he could migraine he worshipped also oh okay so yeah hmm. and there's always the possibility that he flips two plus zeros yeah so we could I, the only responses I see are redirect and migraine I yeah but actually affect don't. what's going on uh, Cootie's Elude, or Ultimate wouldn't help. Yeah. So, a uh, Migraine for a Disarm, or a, uh, Redirect to the Outsider, or to the Illusion, I guess. Or he can hope Flips two plus zeros. Two plus two zeros. Plus zeros. Seth threw us at one hit point. Wow. Grey Ghost got lucky there. Yeah. Now, as long as the terror doesn't move or that minion next to Sethru um, doesn't die, uh, Brilvar can't get to Sethru. And I think Sethru. Oh, <laughs> I was Nightmare. saying. <laughs> And I was just saying that, and yeah. <laughs> hmm. 
Does what does Greg does Gregos have anything in his hand here that can help? <laughs> I think he's looking in his hand to see. Yeah, I'm asking you though. <laughs> oh. Well looking at looking at his hand, I yeah. No, I don't well there's should I say what his cards are? No, if you I'm just asking if there's something that you see that he can do here. Uh, there is one thing that he can do, but I'm pretty sure Sethru is just dead. Okay. It's pretty much if he wants to spend the mana before he dies or not. That's the situation that he's in. Gotcha. I should stop moving my camera. Um. Yep, and there we go. Nightmares. Going for Shilavi and not the minion. I think he's just trying to get a double kill bloodlust here. Yep. That's kind of what it looks like. I don't know how he's going to pull that off, but... Yeah, but I guess without Sethru being able to take a turn and Shabathi having already acted and Akuti taunted, he kind of figured... Oh, yeah, they're just saying the bloodlust point. Um, yeah, I guess that he kind of figured that uh, he wasn't going to be able to to stop outflank, so yeah, it wasn't worth going for, which makes sense. <laughs> yep. And lane two does happen first, which means even if he, there's no reason to go for Nexus. Yep, that illusion is no longer there. We could see something like a accurate move attack skirmish on Shilavi, um, which means he needs to put a plus two and a plus three to get the kill, and then a skirmish from Akuti onto Ashrita after the forced attack needs at least a plus two to get the kill. Yeah, because Ashrita is a shapeshifter. Um, so I mean, it's possible, but it's unlikely. And if Brovar or Frail shapeshift a cutie, or sorry, Estrita or Shilavi. It just gets that much harder. Yeah. Um. Um. What's happening? Did he just? Did they just decide to rewind it instead? What? I don't know, maybe they talked it through and they're like, yeah, never mind. Yeah, no, he decided to kill the Nightmares, or the minion instead, I guess. Okay. Why did Shilla... Oh, got it, yeah. They... Yep, 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 I got must it. must have asked the rewind. He just, he just decided to kill the minion instead of dealing the damage to Shilla D, so he's not going to go for that, he's trying to... Oh, He's trying yep. to get the double minion kill. The, no, it's the triple minion kill. Because the street is oh, a minion, yeah. right? The street is a minion yeah. now. <laughs> but Golbjarn's betrayal for the added four. armor on a Strita. Yep. So four, it's not quite killer. He gets a double minion, so. Yep, he would have needed a plus four to get the kill. Now, I'm not sure what his plan is. I think his plan was to kill her, skirmish into the lane. Um, was that move, worship, attack? Yeah, it was. So he wouldn't be able to skirmish in any way, right? No, he wouldn't. I, yeah, I think that's probably, I don't know what Gregos can actually do to live. Yeah, I think he was hoping to kill a so that way Akuti could move into that spot with the skirmish. Yeah. Uh, although there is a spot um, above Brovar that Akuti could get into. Yeah, I think... Hmm. I mean, so Shafathi is there already. What if he has a flashback? If he has a flashback, that'd be crazy. I just... 
Yeah, I don't see it. I don't oh my god, if he had a flashback, the Shilvy, like, doing the damage to Shilvy would have made a lot of sense there. <laughs> hmm. See, from my perspective, I see something that Great Coast would have done, but I don't. I don't see why he didn't do it. So frail, yeah. Just attack the minion. Yep. <laughs> the correct minion moves. Probably gonna move right into the center. Uh, same thing, really. Oh, skirmish. I was expecting a warship to. Okay. Guess that works. Great, guys, keeping that slow push going. I thought a warship was going to happen to heal Astrida. Oh, that's a big, beefy attack on Brovar. Yep. I'm pretty sure that's just game, unless he has a way to take out minion. Oh wait, he has no Brilvard. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, because that's four to three. Yeah, if Brilvar doesn't have a lead of three from hand, or, you know, whatever, then it's not over. Yeah, but Brilvar also can just attack a minion, too, which is what's happening. Yeah, I think that's just game. I don't... Yeah, Brilvar, he only, needs, he only needs a two as a lead, which, with his deck, is almost guaranteed, but not entirely. Yep. Gregos does have one card left in hand. Not sure what it is. Not sure what he led with. And if that could have been useful if he had played it. I think Eric is looking at um, Gregos discard to see if he could have a flashback. Because that is the... The one thing that I can think of that he does need to worry about. Yeah. Do you, do you know if a flashback is in his uh, discard already? Or if it's in one of the other four cards? I am not actually sure if it's in his discard or not. Okay. Okay. Not sure what the skirmish did, but sure. Yep. Yep, they're just saying that's game. Yep. Ice wall, glacier rebirth. So, were you thinking before about the ice wall when you were saying yeah. there's something you could have done? Yeah. So with Eckert when he attacked and he played Golbjorns or whatever. Yeah, whoever. he could have he could have done the ice wall to block the uh the, the armor. Yeah. I think he wanted it to lead with. Yep, that makes sense. What is the last think, card in his hand? It is a time glitch. Yeah, that wasn't so doing I don't, anything useful. <laughs> yeah. No, it was a close game, but yeah, I, I don't know why he didn't use the Ice Wall. I don't think it would necessarily change a whole lot, but he could have drawn a card. Yeah, well, okay, that means uh, Eric is our 
champion of the World Qualifier, we want to go hop into their channel and talk to them? Yes. If I do that, Brovar doesn't One, get two, to push three, everyone four, out five. necessarily. Wait, but you started here, right? That's I would have spaces. on a warship. Oh, you skirmish. can tell. You could have gotten over there. Wow. Would have been yeah, a yeah. warship skirmish, and then I would have led there, and Brovar wouldn't be able to get both my guys out, theoretically, the avalanche. Mm -hmm. Huh. I totally forgot about the swapping thing. Yeah, that... Yeah. Because I was like, oh, you're so far over there, you can't get over here. So I, because I wanted to do Brilvar last, but then I was like, that stupid Eckerd illusion that I had to destroy. Mm -hmm. What and were you guys talking about? We jumped in um, the middle. My, and you fell in. <laughs> I had a mistake the turn before when uh, Brilvar uses Avalanche on Cootie. Mm -hmm. I I knew he had a push card with destroying the Eckerd illusion. What I should have done with Shabaki was I could have worshipped. Bring him down here. Skirmished and just led on this outflank lane instead of going for Estrita. So Eckerd Solution oh, would be there then, though? So I could still was, push... still destroy the Eckerd Illusion. The Eckerd Illusion wasn't... Avalanche... The Eckerd Illusion wasn't out yet, right? You you moved and worshipped to get the Eckerd Illusion to push my Estrita, right? Yes. That was yes. one of the reasons I thought you did what you did was to put the Illusion close enough to Estrita. Uh, nope, that was just uh, uh, it happens kind of happened that way. <laughs> it happened that way. Lucky V, I guess. Yeah. But if Shafafi would have used his illusion to come down here, I don't know how many times Avalanche works, but I four procs, so I can go one, two, three, push her out here, and then four and push him out there. Okay. So I think I can get both of them out so, there. So uh, you probably would have still got them both. Yeah, you need to get all the way to here. I don't remember what the minion situation was like. You'd have to get onto this row for me not to be able to do it. But yeah. Okay. So we had a question while we were watching. Mm -hmm. So when you had Ekrit here, Grey Ghost, and mm -hmm. you're attacking, he played, is it Golbjorn's Betrayal? Is that what it right. is? Golbjorn's Betrayal, yep. We were kind of wondering, why didn't you play an Ice Wall to stop that? I needed it to lead. Okay, that's what Kirito was saying. <laughs> I suppose I could have ice walled, and I should have ice walled because uh, the top card that I predicted was uh, presence, which is what I, after I got the word of enough ten, I would have drawn presence. Oh, and then you could have, uh, you could have used the presence with a cootie. I don't think, uh, yeah, I would have been able to use the presence with a cootie and. Because of the kill. The chasm, but I think he still wins by one. So if he does that, frail alt. I'd frail alt probably in response. Oh, wait, no. It would have tied up the lane because Estrita would have been dead. Well, I, I I get to frail alt, right? That'll save oh, Estrita. Yes, you can. But now I don't have a lead. Now I have to lead from deck. Well, no, so no. Now... So you frail alt. Oh, no. That puts you up to four. Frail's over here. Yeah. He, he, the Ekrit did. Oh, yeah. It was the one armor. Yeah. You would have got back down to one. Yeah. Oh no, it was a five damage attack though. I was uh you you've been two plus two I put on the, the attack. Plus Four. three. Plus two. Oh no, I plus plus two. Plus two. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was a cootie who got the plus three. It wasn't uh frail in this location at the time. Oh no, she it just was everywhere. Down here. It's it just, just everywhere it's, on the it's map. It's global. Oh, it's a global. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. the enemies no, require line of sight. Yeah. Cooties is the one that's within three. The so line of sight. Yes, you are correct. I always forget that about Frail. Well, so they both they both heal each friendly hero within three, but then um then it's the line of sight from the illusion for Akuti for the disarm, and then line of sight from Frail if she shapeshifted to deal damage to the enemies also. Oh no, Akuti's is line of sight for the heal as well. It's gotta be line of sight of Akuti. Oh, you're right. It is. Yep. Yep. I get those two mixed up from time to time. Yeah, they they oh, kind of yeah. mirror each other, except they don't. Yeah, I personally like frails a little bit more just because I don't got a position as much. But this <laughs> comes in uh, handy with that disarm every once in a while. If you can get enough people with it, it feels pretty good. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, I think, I mean, you also don't know what cards you draw off of it. But if you, you know, hindsight yeah. seeing what you draw, the ice wall 
using it there probably would have been a bit better. But you obviously wanted to hold it for the lead, which makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And then... Oh, it, was, um, uh, it was a pretty good game there. Yeah. When you did that Nightmares remember. Incarnate at the end, you first you first went up to Shirley, but then changed your time your target to the minion. Were you initially thinking that Bloodlust would be easier, and then you said, no, maybe protecting the lane will be easier? Uh, I was just kind of doing it as a... Uh, I think I'm done. I, I <laughs> okay. I'm dead there. Okay, because I was like... Four minion advantage and... Yeah, I was looking at it thinking, like, maybe you have, like, a flashback or something you were hoping to try to get the kill. <laughs> yeah, I, I wish. <laughs> I wish. I was thinking Bloodlust at the start of the round. Uh, killing Sethiru. Yeah, there's was, a case uh, to be made... It, I think. Yeah. There's a case to be made that I should have just let Astrida die against Shafathi to minimize the bloodlust possibilities. But you still have Nightmares Incarnate, so, you know, Shafathi could still do a finishing blow with that, I guess. Yes, my original plan, I suppose, was uh, kill Astrida's Shafathi, hold on the Nightmares Incarnate, and just wait till a hero's low enough and just play from where Shafathi is or from Sethira's Illusion. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, that was a great game. Uh, you both played very well. Some really great plays on both parts. The materialized, the time warp through Sethru's illusion, I thought was great, even though it kind of the exact positioning ended up backfiring a little bit. Um, it did backfire. <laughs> <laughs> the exact positioning got a little awkward for you, but the mm -hmm. the initial play was really cool and well executed. So yeah, both you both played very well, and uh, congratulations to Eric on qualifying for Worlds. Thank you. Yeah, this was great. And I think um, Gregos and I played in the Swiss also, and we had Bloodlust, and that's how he won there. And so the only difference is I uh, talked with Clinton and played a practice game, and Clinton's <laughs> like, if Bloodlust is on the field, you have to bring Shilavi. And I think 75% of the game, I'm like, why did bring Shilavi? This is useless, and he jumped away and everything like that. But Clinton was right, so I have to dedicate this <laughs> one to Clinton. You, you know, uh, Eric got to congratulate you. Now, someone might correct me in the chat if they hear this, but I'm pretty sure Sethru dying here was the first hero death I got the entire tournament. Oh, wow. <laughs> People weren't trying, or first. you're just so tricksy that nobody could lay a finger on I, you? I went, down to, I went down to three or four health a few times, but uh -huh. most of the time when a big attack was coming my way, Time Warp was my savior. Yeah, okay. I was able to so, okay. Away. I so, gotta make that my new title. I am the best uh, killing hero or player in uh, all of Skyter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Best. I think, uh, that's my best first, I think that's my first kill the entire tournament. By the way. <laughs> that's awesome. First well, death, first kill. Best, best uh, hero killer in the world. Got it, Eric. <laughs> RG's not gonna like that with his Yami. I think. <laughs> yeah. I think he likes doing those kills. No, yeah. was, it was really fun. Yeah, I think that at least, as they say, at least you can say, Grey Ghost, that you brought Nupton all the way up to the top. So yes, there I, shouldn't I, be any more. Job. There shouldn't be any more for a little while. Nupton's garbage. They made it to the top. So on this map, <laughs> I think these illusions are really. I mean, I was super impressed. I mean, I know you got one uh, Whispers of Nupton, but having all four illusions out on turn one and not really lose it, he got two and two on lanes, right? Or he could have done one on one on lanes. But basically, I was like, oh, crud. He had a great turn one. And he had all four of those illusions piled here. Everybody was within projection. And I mean, by the end, it was funny that I had like spread his guys all the way out. So, like, Shafathi's illusion sitting here and nothing's near it. But still, I, I mean, yeah. It's scary when all those illusions are working, and yeah. especially Eckert's. Yeah. No, the first after the first two turns, they're saying, I'm like, Grey Ghost is in a, a very good position here, but we're going into turn three. Er all of Eric's deck is turned on now, and he has a full full hand of cards. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens on turn three. <laughs> yep. I was uh, keeping track of your three pips throughout the game. We got into turn three. I'm like, he's got five left. Five left. <laughs> just kept flipping three pip after three pip. I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> just just got to hold out, but you had the, the alts in hand. I was really crossing my fingers on the Estrita one. I turned three, came like, he says Estrita first. I'm probably in trouble. <laughs> and <laughs> that, is, that was the case. I mean, seriously, I got 
great value out of three of my ults, and you didn't mm -hmm. land one of them, right? You never even drew one, I don't think? Never even drew one, no. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Gregos. Uh, Gregos, you are a terrible person. You made us all spend like 15 minutes looking at the rules, and then you had the barring the way. Correct. <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, no, you gotta fault. make sure you're playing by the rules. I don't want no, Eric no. to think he can do something. Uh, <laughs> right. I mean, Find it totally changes my plan, that. right? Because if, yeah. if not, Astrida stays in that lane to get extra value, and then I just hope I cover up the middle <laughs> enough, right? So, it, and as I was doing it, I was like, man, if he has barring the way. But but not only that, I don't know if you saw that I threw away underground tunnels, and then after we checked the rule, I brought it back into my hands. So my plan was to spawn a guy in the middle, and then underground tunnels the second guy to the middle. And I would have been like, hey, look, I've got guys here. But you guys, but then... Uh, barring the way. Boom. Well, no, you took underground tunnels back and dropped nightmares. You probably, I'm like... Silently, yes. Yes, yeah, exactly. Because right. <laughs> I know what I'm going to do here in a moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would have been... I'm just saying, like, you, you could have just said, oh, yeah, you could do it. It's fine. It saved us all the trouble. But you know what? It was a learning opportunity for everyone. Now, everyone knows the rules. Yep. Yep. <laughs> well, good game, guys. Oh, yep, good I game. I learned one more thing. Never pick, hit the rewind time button. That's why everything did that. I'm like, oh, to rewind it, like, 15 seconds. And it rewinded it to the beginning of the game or something. <laughs> yeah. So that when that whole bad. thing happened, uh, that's, I pressed, that's what I was like. I press spread instead of search. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you guys should just group it back together. I'm like, I, I'm like, I just, like, Urban's like, how can I face it? I'm like, honestly, just don't touch anything. Let them figure it out. <laughs> yep, that was smart. <laughs> yep. Oh, I really enjoy Embassy Runes. I, I will say... It gets a rap for being a control map, but you can really do some aggro here. Uh, I mean, aside, aside from those starting things being in, in cover hexes, I mean, you get across the map real fast if you want to. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, the problem is, is that there's four places, right? So when you do that, you're definitely giving up control somewhere, but sometimes that's warranted. I mean, yeah. I basically sacrificed my middle tower to go up just a through, even though it wasn't right. It might have ended up being right. I don't know. I mean... I, yeah, so it's interesting that you don't have to win all four lanes, and so you can. I think the balance is awesome. I guess you is what just got to figure out which ones are the important ones for the time. Yep. Yeah, I still haven't solved the map. Like I was playing earlier in the qualifier, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm gonna try and go for kills this game. And then the way the game went, actually, I think I was playing against Urban Person. I'm like, there's no way to go for kills. I just, it's like all control. I'm like, yeah, this map just seems too controlling. And then the next week I go against Clinton, and I'm just like, oh, okay, I guess this is how you kill. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, it, it was a it was fun. I really like the feel of Nupton on this map. I'm excited for the new cards, but the current cards for them feels great just because they can be wherever they want almost a lot of the time. Yeah, I'm excited to play Whisper of Nupton with the Blue Yellow Heroes. Yeah, that'll that'll be good. It'll be a good time. Yep. Or right, you materialize in blue, or indoctrinate to make your blue heroes affected by the new um, the new heroes things. There's some cool stuff. I, I'm. It's gonna be bad. I avoid indoctrinate. <laughs> I just. I think it costs too much to get the projections for one turn. Well, you also play all yellow, so it doesn't make sense for you. It's good in a like a, a half and half deck, so I think the blue it might be decent in like especially if you're going like head like two old blue heroes and then the two then the two new heroes. Like it kind of makes sense in that case, I think. Yeah. Well, well anyway, like good Eric game, guys. Head out. <laughs> yeah. All right. And yeah, he's got to yeah, go to a, a different tournament. I think he said today. So no, it was a a good time. Hey, Talk Albert. to you guys later. Yep. Good yep. game, guys. Talk to and, you guys uh, later. Talk to you guys later. Yep. I Bye. should end the stream. Bye. And thank you, everyone, for watching and listening. Um, hope you all enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time. Gaber. Gaber. And stream.